president of Jude. Well, joining us now, Tom Fitton. He's the president of Judicial Watch, Sidney Powell, General Michael Flynn's defense attorney, former federal prosecutor, best-selling author. Uh, I want to say, first of all, thank you both for being here, and I appreciate it. Sidney, let's start with uh, this election process. Uh, we just heard from John Solomon that the FBI, indeed, is being diligent, is involved, and we all hope he is exactly right. Uh, your thoughts first about the knowledge now that uh, the Justice Department is involved in this uh, review of the election. Well, I'm delighted to hear that. I think there are any number of things they need to investigate, including the likelihood that 3% of the vote total was changed in the pre-election voting ballots that were collected digitally by using the hammer program and a software program called scorecard that would have amounted to a massive change in the vote that would have gone across the country and explains a lot of what we're seeing in addition they ran an algorithm to calculate votes they might need to come up with for mr biden in specific areas i think that explains what happened in michigan where the computer glitch resulted in a change of votes of uh about 5,500 in favor of President Trump, just in one of 47 districts. All those districts need to be checked for that same, quote, software glitch, end quote, that would change the result in Michigan dramatically. Um, the same thing is happening in other states. We've had hundreds of thousands of ballots mysteriously appear for uh, solely for Mr. Biden, which is statistically impossible as a matter of mathematics. It can all be documented. We are putting it into materials that we will file in federal court, and we need to seek relief in multiple states to enjoin the certification of any election results. Tom Fitton, as, as you listen to, to Sydney, that, that sounds like a, a strong case for a straightforward allegation of, uh, of fraud. The two programs that she just mentioned, I am going to ask you right now, have, have you ever heard of them? Because I had not heard of them. No, I mean, there have been noises about it on the Internet, but I don't know anything beyond what uh, Sydney's reporting now. I, you know, I go back to the numbers you reported at the beginning of the segment. The president was winning on Tuesday. Right. He's not winning now. And he's not winning now as a result of a process that the voters can't have confidence in, the state legislatures can't have confidence in, and in my view, the courts can't have confidence in. So the question is, are the courts going to undo what went on? I don't know. But the state legislatures in Georgia, Pennsylvania... Michigan, uh, Wisconsin, perhaps Arizona, they now have an opportunity to make a stand on behalf of the rule of law. Are they going to endorse what went on this week, or are they going to appoint a clean slate of electors that supports President Trump? That could be the next battle, and I would think that activists interested in this issue, and if you're concerned watching this, start talking to your state legislators, and I start asking where Congress is, because Congress, in the end, is going to be the judge of the electoral co uh, college votes, and I, if I were in Congress, I'd be telling these states, you better keep up on, uh, you better be honest here, because we're not going to accept your votes if, you're, if, you're, if your election is a sham. Well, Sydney, let's go back to to uh, Hammer and Scorecard. Are, are those the names that you just used uh, for those programs? Uh, what's being done about it, and, and how broadly were they used by vote uh, counters uh, in various states? I, th I think they were very broadly used, but, but not by the vote counters. They were used by the forces in the Democratic operatives that had access to these programs through the, the government access points that they have and used it illegally to change votes in this country. It's got to be investigated probably by the president's most trusted military intelligence officials who can get into the system and see what was done. But we do have some evidence that that is exactly what happened. And they've used it against other entities in other countries. Uh, it's just been turned recently against our own citizens here to change election results. It's absolutely appalling that that can be done. And whether it's called comp computer glitches or something else, somebody has actually gone into the system and changed voting results. 
that's that's called intervention in our elections, uh, irrespective of, uh, I guess, if they were Russia or China, we'd refer to them as meddling. Uh, but it's intervention, and it's also crooked as hell, rigging this election uh, in any whether, no matter the jurisdiction, whether it's uh, uh, Michigan, Georgia, wherever it might be. Uh, what can we do about it? Because the, the Department of Justice, I mean, if there's evidence of that program, why not just turn it over to the Justice Department and say, let's and, and go to the courts and say, this has got to stop now. Here is the way in which it was done. Well, we've been trying to get their attention and we're going to try even harder and we'll have to put it in a federal lawsuit, apparently, and get as much of it out as we possibly can. We have some excellent witnesses on the issue. But this is coup 5.0, Lou. I mean, there was no reason to think that the Democratic operatives who spent hundreds of millions of dollars creating the Russia hoax, the Steele dossier, taking us through a special counsel operation for two years, trying an impeachment hoax, the apocalypse hoax, the obstruction hoax, wouldn't go so far as to create every means of voter fraud they could come up with to steal this election. That's exactly what happens. The president must fight back now in every way, shape, or form. We cannot let this republic be stolen by the democratic operatives who want to destroy the republic and make it a socialist country where they continue to line their pockets with these backdoor global deals like the Biden laptop from hell exposes. Well, Cindy, that's, uh, I think you're exactly right about th that not happening. Uh, let's, let's turn, Tom, uh, Tom Fenton, you've, you've pointed out in our discussions that these legislatures are Republican-controlled. Who can take that message to them, and precisely how likely is it that they would be receptive to a clean slate of electors uh, who would represent, say, the state of Pennsylvania? That's a, that's a Republican legislature. Uh, and and stand up for the integrity of elections and support the president. Well, you know, the focus from the media and activists and, and regular voters and citizens need to be brought to bear here. Uh, certainly the information we're learning uh, from campaign activists on the ground, independent journalists like John Solomon, the work of Judicial Watch should be also be brought to bear. I mean, we know, we knew going into this election in Pennsylvania, Lou, there were 800,000 extra names in the rolls in Pennsylvania. Nevada County has 154,000 inactive names on the rolls. Clark County, Nevada, I mean. Uh, so we've, we've got this problem of dirty election rolls, mailing and balloting being allowed to draw from and them. A and apparently and a Republican and a Republican party that doesn't demand that those rolls be cleaned up. I mean, that's crazy. Could you put up that uh, graphic again, please, folks? Uh, I want everybody to see what they're looking at, because this is really very important, what Tom's talking about. The control of both chambers of the legislature in these states that are critical right now in deciding who the next president will be. Michigan, Wisconsin, Arizona, Pennsylvania, North Carolina, Georgia. They must play a role in this to preserve the integrity, uh, just as Tom Fitton is urging. Uh, and Sidney Powell, uh, what you're breaking here tonight uh, is extraordinary as well. Uh, we've got to go. We're at, the, at that point. But thank you both for everything you're doing for the country and for the president. We appreciate it. Thanks so much.